This morning's reading comes from Matthew chapter 26, verses 26 to 29. Now as they were eating, Jesus took bread, and after blessing it, broke it, and gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink again of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. When Bill first asked me to share a few words with Mary and I on the Last Supper, I was at first intimidated, then excited, and then honoured. I think we should do this in three parts. First of all, my own conversion, which changed my life. Secondly, what it means to Mary and I to gather together with the body on a Sunday morning to share communion. And finally, how it affects our lives as we go forwards into these very troubled times. It was October 2001. I was nearly three years sober, an atheist and a practicing Buddhist. I'd planned a trip to the island of Kauai with a young lady who I cared for, and she dumped me. I found myself on the Sunday evening, standing in a shower, somewhat distraught, calling out to God, saying, God, please help me. And I heard a voice. It said, you're praying to me for help, but you won't come to my house. And I saw a picture of a small white church in the town of Kaloa. I knew exactly where it was. I'd been there for a meeting the night before. Driving quickly to the church, I met the pastor's son who invited me to stay for the evening service. After the service, they invited me to come back on the following Wednesday for a Bible study, which I did. It was shortly after September the 11th, and the pastor was teaching on forgiveness. And as part of his lesson, he asked about our relationship with his word. I didn't know what he meant, and afterwards asking him, he said, that's the Bible. And going off, he came back with the NIV handout, the Gospel of John, saying, if I took this and read it and brought it back the following Sunday, he would give me a whole free Bible. This wasn't what I wanted. And driving back to my hotel, I flipped it on the bed and thought that will be the last you see of me. A little while later, I noticed it and remembering the words from the person who first helped me get sober, contempt prior to investigation, I realized I'd discarded it without looking at it. And so opening it to the inside cover where there's a preamble which says, we all have a hole in our heart which we're wanting to fill. We can fill it with sex or with money, with power, with substances. But it said, this is a God-shaped hole that can only be filled with Jesus. I didn't accept that, but reading on, I began to read the Gospel of John and at 20 past 10 on that 10th of October 2001, I looked up and I knew I was not alone. I heard the words, I am the way, the truth and the life, follow me. And feeling in almighty scared, I went outside, knelt down on the balcony and turning to the back of the book, said what today I understand to be the sinner's prayer, asking God to forgive me and committing to follow him for the rest of my life. I was lifted up. I'm not sure physically or spiritually, and found myself weeping on the floor at the thoughts that I could be forgiven for the dreadful things that we had committed during my time as a mercenary in the South African Army. It's been nearly 18 years since then, but I like to be reminded of it frequently and particularly whenever we celebrate communion. For well, that is what allowed me to come into the presence of God and to know that I had been forgiven of sins, sins that I did not believe could be forgiven. And so each Sunday when we celebrate communion, I come in with Mary and sitting quietly like to remember just how great a price Jesus paid with his body and his blood that I could be who I am and what I am today. Let me hand over to Mary for a moment to share with you what Sunday's 
what the body means to her. When Alex told me that we'd be speaking on the Last Supper and Communion, in preparation for that, we began our morning devotional time with the scripture that Bill had given us and used that as a form of morning devotion to really spend time with Jesus and ask Jesus uh, what that scripture meant to us. As I listened to Jesus and began to pray what communion meant to me, when I first reflected, I realized that I was more focused on the act. And so I continued to pray and ask Jesus about communion. And one morning, I think it was two mornings later, as we were sitting there praying and <clears throat> having our devotional time, I felt like the Lord had put on my heart that it was like a heartfelt response that Mary communion is a time to gather together with my body and to fellowship together and be intimate together. I look forward to coming together as a church body to have communion together someday and to worship together, to reflect on what Jesus did for us on the cross. He died for our sins. And because of that, we all can be in his presence and worship together, have communion together, and be grateful for what he did for all of us. There are a number of things husbands are advised not to do. One of them is to teach their wife to drive. I'm going to add coaching one's wife to produce a video recording to our list. Quite seriously, it was fun to do, and it's wonderful to be celebrating in this way with you all. Going into the future, it is remembering what Jesus did for us that is the, the bedrock on which we build our marriage. We live in these very difficult times, confined to a home most of the time in quarantine, considerable uncertainty, which I know many of us face. And we start the day by sitting together, reading scripture together, and inviting Jesus to come and sit with us as we come into the presence of our Father. We like to think of it, as Bill preached one Sunday, as having a conversation with a loving Father, Abba Father. And that sets us off to the right start for the day. We can think about the day ahead. We can discuss topics that used to completely baffle us. And today we can discuss in submission, in respect and reverence to Christ. These can be finances, health, family. And as I said, they form the bedrock of our marriage, one day at a time, remembering what Matthew said, tomorrow's troubles will take care of themselves. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all else will be added to you. I hope as you gather together and break the bread and share the wine or the juice as families, we can remember ourselves as one virtual body who loved Jesus together. It's a pleasure to have been here with you this morning.